Close IndyCar racing legend Janet Guthrie recalls qualifying for the Indy 500 at IMSS in 1977, breaking ground as the first woman to drive in the race. Mario Andretti, Pippa Mann and Sarah Fisher discuss Guthrie's impact on women in racing. May 2017 Jenna Watson Indy star Indianapolis Janet Guthrie once said she might have never made Indianapolis 500 history if it weren't for him, I owe it all to one of the last shoestring team owners, the first woman to ever compete in the 500 told author Betsy Ross, a guy named Rolla Volstead, from Portland, Oregon, an innovator, a car builder, mechanic, engineer and a longtime 500 car entrant who made history with Guthrie in 1977, Volstead died Sunday in Portland at the age of 99, more 500 history in 1975, Indy 500 Rookie of the Year Bill Puter bought Dees from sleeping in her car to the Indy 500 How Janet Guthrie Changed Racing for Women Volstead was a World 2 veteran and lumber executive who first began fielding national championship now IndyCar cars in 1955. But at WASNT until 1964 when he first qualified for the 500. That year, according to IMS, he brought one of the first American built rear engine cars to contain an Offenhauser engine. Lee Sutton drove the car and it qualified 8th before finishing 15th. Over the next dozen's years, Volstead fielded cars for drivers such as Billy Foster, Cale Yarborough, Dick Simon, Tom Bigelow, Arnie Nepper, Larry Dixon and Denny Zimmerman. Before his career as an owner was over, he would field 15 cars that started in the 500, the most memorable of which was very likely Guthrie in 1977. I wanted to satisfy my own aspiration of being the first to enter a woman at Indy, Volstead told People magazine in 1976. I asked around for the top female driver and everyone answered Janet Guthrie. Volstead first brought Guthrie to Indianapolis, Indiana 1976, but they failed to make a qualifying attempt because of mechanical issues. The pair returned in 1977 and made history when Guthrie qualified 26th. In a 2016 interview with Speedsport.com Guthrie said she can still remember how excited Volstead and his team were after she pulled into Pit Road, I was lost in a blizzard of hugs and kisses from Rolla and the guys, Guthrie said. The team had held together, we had struggled through fearful adversity, but we had put Rolla's car into the Indianapolis 500. Volstead never had the most money and therefore never won a 500 or an Indy car race, but he did have the honor of providing two-time Formula One world champion and 1965-500 winner Jim Clark his final Indy car ride. Clark raced Volstead's car in the final event of the 1967 USAC season, a 300-mile road race at Riverside, California. Clark trailed Dan Gurney for the first 23 laps before taking the lead for a single lap only to have a valve break. Clark died five months later after a crash during a Formula 2 race in Germany. According to Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Volstead was one of the great characters of the Speedway and a mentor to countless mechanics and engineers over the years, including Grant King, Hal Spurb and numerous others. He also came across as a pure enthusiast who, even when he WASNT an official entrant, always seemed to be aligned with a team in some sort of advisory capacity, official or unofficial. Follow Indy Star Motorsports insider Jim Aiello on Twitter and Instagram at Jim Aiello.